All right, so today's lab, uh, lab number 11, we're going to be playing with lenses, or more particularly, what are known as thin lenses. So a thin lens is a lens whose radius of curvature is much greater than the thickness of the lens. So basically that means that if here was my lens, so the radius of curvature is talking about the radius of these sides. So draw a line here. So this then is my radius of curvature. And then the thickness is the width across here. So the thickness, so a thin lens is one where the radius of curvature is much, much bigger than that of the thickness. So this is what we identify as a thin lens. So in general, there are typically two types of lenses. So two types. So the first types is what's known as a converging lens. And then the second type is what's known as a diverging lens. So what's the difference between the two? So a converging lens, not converging. So here you take your lens. So this is a converging lens. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna shine light parallel to the principal axis. So this line I'm drawing here is called the principal axis. So this is the line which bisects the lens. So I have as much on top as I have on the bottom. And what the converging lens does is here. So if we take our light, which is moving in parallel then to the principal, what's gonna happen then is the light is gonna come through and then using Snell's law, it's then going to refract uh, once it passes through the inside, so it's going to transmit in. And then when it does that, all the light then is going to bend then towards the normal line here. So basically what will happen is this line will come in, hit, and then get refracted down through here. Uh, this one on this side will also bend and get refracted through this line here. Uh, this one will bend, get refracted through here. This one's going to come in, bend, get refracted through here. This one's gonna come in, get slightly refracted through the same position. And this one's also gonna get slightly refracted through the same position. So what'll happen then is with a converging lens, you shine all the light and then that light is going to then pass through a particular point where this point here is what's known as the focal point. The focal point then is a distance away from the center of the lens. And this is what we call the focal length. Good. So <clears throat> this is then a converging lens. So lens then takes all the light which comes in parallel to the principal, goes through, can uh, puts all of it then onto a single point, concentrates it all to a single point, so that this single point here has basically all the intensity which is passing through. So this is why if you took a magnifying glass and you hold it in the air, you can actually then fry an ant because you're concentrating all of the light to a single point. A diverging lens, let's talk about diverging. So diverging lens, typically we're gonna draw those looking something like this. So this is my diverging lens. Okay, I got down here. Again, we have our principal. So this is again my principal axis. So in this case, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take all of our light moving parallel initially to the principal axis. Draw just four rays in this case. Now what happens in this case though, is instead of all the light being concentrated to a single point on this side, what actually happens is via its name, all the light is actually going to diverge away. So this one's gonna come through here and diverge as if it came from this particular point. This one's gonna diverge away, doing something more like this. This one's gonna come off something like that. And then this one's gonna come off even at a greater angle. So if I ray trace these lines backwards, what I'll notice is that each one of these lines appears as if it started off at a particular point on the backside of the lens. So all these lines then, what we call a ray. So each one of these guys are called rays. So we're drawing what's known as a ray diagram. But each one of these rays appears as if it started off at this particular point, which again is what's known as the focal point. And again, the distance from the center of the lens to that particular location, again, is called the focal length. Focal length. 
one. So this is the converging lens and this is a diverging lens. So again, diverging lens just means it causes all the light rays to diverge outward, kind of more like a flashlight would. Uh, and then a converging lens causes all of it to be concentrated at a particular point. So what we're gonna be doing in this lab then is creating images from each one of these different types of lenses. So let's talk about image formation. Formation. So here we're gonna be playing with two parts. We're gonna have two different types. Well, they're both gonna be converging lenses, but we're gonna have two different lenses with two different focal points. So, and then what you're gonna be measuring in this lab then is the focal point from this by generating a image. So let's talk about our image. So here's my lens. Here then is my principal axis. So we know that this guy has a focal point on this side, but it's also going to have a focal point on the back side as well. So what we want to do then is create an image from some sort of object. So let's say here's my object. So I'm going to draw this guy here. This is going to be my object. Good. So this is the thing that I want to make an image of. So the question is then how do we actually make an image? So typically what we're going to do is we're going to draw three rays. The first ray is a ray that goes from the tip along parallel to the principal until it gets to the center of the lens. And then when it does end, it's going to refract it then down through the focal point. So this is what we call ray number one. Ray number two then is the ray which goes through the focal point on the near side hits the center of the lens and then goes, gets refracted parallel to the principal. So it comes out on the other side. This is what we call ray number two. And then ray number three is the ray which is gonna go through the center, get not refracted at all, and then pass through. So in this case, since it's passing through the center of the lens, it doesn't feel any refraction. So it's gonna keep moving in this case. So this is then ray number three. So typically when we draw a ray diagram and we look for the image formation, we're gonna draw these, typically two out of these three is fine. So usually we're gonna draw either ray one and two, sometimes we'll do one and three, depending on how close we are to the actual lens itself. Now notice other things is, where this image is going to be created depends on where I am relative to the focal point here. So in this case, I'm drawing a object which is outside of the focal point. But what happens if that object was actually inside of the focal point? So what I mean by that is let's draw another one down here. So here is my new. So there's that guy. Let's say my focal point again is here. And I'm gonna draw that over there. Uh, so it should be found here and here. So now let's put our object on the inside. So somewhere here. So in this case, we're still gonna draw right number one. So right number one is gonna go through, hit the center of the lens, get refracted then through. So it goes out in this direction. But notice right number two, we can't really draw because we can't really draw this guy going down through here. So what we're gonna have to do then is draw only ray number three. So ray three again is gonna go through the center and then come off in this direction. Now notice what's happening here is these two guys are actually diverging. So what will happen then is if my eye was out here looking, so here's my eye, same thing here, my eye is actually here looking to find out where the image is. So here for the first one, my image is created here. So where these three lines meet up, this is the location of the image formation. So this is what we're gonna call our image. But in this case, these two lines are never going to cross each other because they're diverging away from each other. So what your eye is going to do is it's going to follow these rays backwards as if they came from someplace far away out here. And this one, it's going to ray trace backwards as well until it's going to appear as if they came from someplace out here. And what it's going to do is it's going to ray trace these guys until they cross each other somewhere back here, which is then the location of the image. So this is our image in this case. So notice what happened is that the object here is outside of the focal point, then this image will then be somewhere over here. But in this case, if the image is inside of the focal point, the image will then be created actually behind the object itself. So the difference between each one of these is this one is what we call a real image. It's also inverted. 
So it's called real because imagine if I took a piece of paper and I put it directly at the location of that image formation, the image is actually going to be formed right on that piece of paper because all the light is actually passing directly through that point. So that's why this is called real. So in this case, you can think about it as the light is moving from left to right. So the light is going, oops, sorry me, all in this direction. So it starts off here, ends up over here on the right. So in this case, it's a real image because all the light ends up at that particular location. This one is what we call a virtual image. And it's virtual because if I put my piece of paper here where this image is actually created, there's going to be no image on that piece of paper because all the light ends up over here. No light actually passes through this particular image. So this is what makes it a virtual image. And this is also what we call upright. So this is an upright image. <clears throat> so this is how we actually form images using these ray diagrams. So the next question is, well, how do we actually write these things down mathematically? So again, we know this distance here is F, which is the focal length. Let's come up with some new. So we're going to call this distance here, which is the distance from the image, or sorry, from the object to the center of the lens as D. So D in this case then is equal to, I'm sorry, S, not D. Do, do, do. So this is a distance S, which is equal to the object distance. Uh, and then the distance here from the center of the lens to the location of the image, which we're going to call S prime, S prime then is equal to the image distance. So we have what's known as the thin lens equation. So the thing lens equation says is that one over the object distance plus one over the image distance is equal to one over the focal length, right? Now notice here, there are some sign conventions because here, this is my image distance on this side, but for this one, this distance here is going to be my image distance where this one is on the right hand side. This one's on the left hand side. This distance here is my object distance, which is also on the left. And then this distance here is still the focal length. So basically to use this, we have to come up with some sign conventions and our sign conventions are, so number one, if we have a converging lens, oops, sorry, actually this is my focal length, sorry about that. <clears throat> I was thinking of a diverging lens there for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, good. So if uh, we have a converging lens, then the focal length is positive, negative otherwise. So in that case, that'd be it for a diverging lens otherwise. Uh, number two, the object distance is positive if on the side that the light is coming from. So if my object is on the side of the lens where the light is coming from, which is what it was doing here, my light is being shone from, in this case, left to right, then my object distance is positive, negative otherwise. So if it's on the side at which the light is going to, then that would be negative. Uh, three, the image distance is positive if on the side that the light is going to, S prime is negative otherwise. So what does that mean? So that means in this case, the image is on the side at which the light is going to, because it's starting on the left-hand side and going to the right-hand side. So this then S prime would be a positive image distance. But on this side, it's on the light that the side that the light is coming from, not the side at which the light is going to, which means that this one would actually be a negative image distance. So good. Uh, we're not playing with. Uh, 
pardon me. Uh, yeah, so we're not playing with uh, diverging lenses in this lab, so I'm not going to worry about drawing those and showing what those look like. Well, we'll do those in class at some point. Uh, the last thing is, is that the magnification, which I'll define in just a second, will be negative uh, if the image is inverted and positive if upright. So what's the magnification? So we have what's known as the lateral magnification. So the magnification in this case then is defined as M is equal to negative of the image distance divided by the object distance, which is then equal to, in this case, the image height divided by the object height. So here H prime is equal to the image height, and then H is equal to the object height. So going back to our picture, all that means is this height here would be our object height, and this height here would be our image height. Now the negative sign is basically put in there because Again, as we've seen in these two drawings, if my image distance is positive, what happens in that case then is the image ends up being inverted. So this negative sign is to make sure that this guy is inverted. And then when you put this in, that would also be a negative sign. And then if it was negative, the image distance, then this guy is upright. So this negative sign, again, in here is just to make sure that I get a negative when the negative makes it positive. So, uh, so that's it. So this is what we're playing with in this lab. So basically, what you're going to be doing in this lab is, let me bring up the uh, lab itself. Good. So here, there's going to be two parts. So in the first part, what you're going to be doing is uh, setting up a distance between the lens and the object, which is equal to 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters, and 60 centimeters. And then what you're going to be doing then is measuring the image distance. And then from the image distance and the object distance, you're then going to find the focal length for these cases. Oh, sorry. So 30, and then 40, 50, and then 60. Sorry. So for each one, you're going to do it four times. So for the 30 centimeters, you'll then have an image distance, a 40 centimeters, an image distance, 50, image distance, 60, image distance. And then you're going to calculate four different uh, focal lengths. And then from there, you're going to average those four together to find the focal length of the first lens. Then we're going to do it again. So in this case, uh, do the same thing. So 30, 40, 50, and 60 with the second lens. Uh, so in that case, again, you're going to have four different focal lengths from those four different focal lengths. You'll then average those together to find the focal length of the second one. Now, you'll notice some things on here. Uh, this one says part C and part D, and this one only talks about a part C. Uh, so again, here, since we have the shortened lab periods, we're not doing part C or part D, so they're not even on the uh, lab manual, as you can see from here. So that's it. So basically, you're just finding the focal length for both of the two different uh, lenses. And other things you're also doing here um, is you are looking at the magnification. So you're going to calculate the magnification using the image height and the object height. And then you're also going to uh, find it experimentally from the image distance and the object distance. And then from there, you're going to find the discrepancies between the two, where this one is the theoretical value, this one is the experimental value. So you're going to find your discrepancies, both your absolute relative discrepancies, and again, average your focal lengths together, and then that is it. So nice short lab this week, so not too bad. We're going to be working mostly in the dark, so we can actually see these things. Uh, now again, when it says you're looking for the image height and the object height, it is not the distance from the table or not the distance from the track to it. It is physically the object distance, which means that it is, or the image heights and the object height. So it's literally the size of the arrow. So that's it. So you're measuring the size of those arrows. Uh, other than that, uh, here are some examples that are in here. So you can go through and do the pre-lab, uh, but otherwise not too bad. So nice simple, easy lab this week. So, all right. So that's it. I'll see you guys this week.